Welcome back, Slasher fans. I am Steve Goltz along with Kevin Summerfield, and this is the Slasher Studios commentary. We are taking on Scream 3 tonight. It's been a while since I've seen it, so I am I'm ready and raring to go, as they say. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, Steve's only seen this a couple times. It's been a long time for him. I actually just watched this two nights ago to kind of become reacquainted with it, even though I have seen it probably a good 50 times. Uh, yeah, so without further ado, we're going to be watching Scream 3 with you guys, or possibly maybe you guys are just listening to this on its own. So either way, we'll try to be informative, give you guys some facts on the kind of black sheep of the series. So, when you guys are ready, press play on your remotes right now. Alright, so we have the the Blu-ray in. Whether you guys are watching it on Blu-ray, DVD, or perhaps even VHS, um, again, welcome. And uh, speaking of VHS, Kevin, you have, a, you have a couple VHS screams. I think we kind of touched on that last time. Uh, yeah, I don't have Scream 3 on VHS for whatever reason. I know I used to when it first came out. Actually, I worked at a video store, and we actually had a demo copy of Scream 3, which I don't know if you guys remember, like, the screener copies. Um, occasionally, you can go to, like, Goodwill or a thrift store, and sometimes you'll find the screener copies, and it'll, it'll have, like, all these facts on the cover. It'll be, like, $90 million, like, box office hit, like, number one in America. And it's basically their advanced copies sent to to retailers and video stores to try to convince them to buy as many copies as possible. So, Scream 3 was released on uh, February 4th, 2000. It was originally set for a December 10th, 1999 release. Uh, I still remember when they changed that release date. Um, I was in high school at the time, and we had the those like assignment notebooks that they gave you at the beginning of the year. And starting at the beginning of the year, I had actually had a countdown for how many days it was till Scream 3. And then they changed the date. You got and I, mad and crazy. I was, just, I was just pissed off. But I was mostly pissed off because there was part of me that was really scared that Y2K was going to happen. <laughs> I wasn't going to have a chance to watch Scream 3. <laughs> well, we all we all made it through. So, yeah, isn't that weird to think about? Like, back in the day, we were scared the computers would, like, shut off and whatever. And it's, it was it's definitely... It's surreal to even think about, like, ever that happening yeah it was definitely a different day i mean it's so crazy to think that scream 3 is 14 years old um just to kind of think about that i mean so when scream 3 came out friday the 13th part 6 was as old as scream 3 is now hmm. so i mean it's crazy to think that a movie from the 80s was as old as a movie in 2000 as as old as a movie today um, it's kind of a time warp. It kind of ages us all. Um, but yeah, I remember doing a countdown in high school, counting down the days until this movie was going to come out. Uh, I saw this opening day at the theater that night. It was it was a packed screening. It wasn't. Qu I don't think it sold out. It wasn't quite as um, busy as Scream Two, but there was definitely a lot of people there. How many times did you see this one in theaters? I saw this one four. Four times. I saw it three times opening weekend. I saw it the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then I also saw it the following Friday. Okay. We got a little little action here in the in the shower scene. Very yeah, some, intriguing. Some foggy nudity right mm -hmm. there. So Scream Three was kind of the first one in the series that really benefited or um I guess kind of was punished by the internet uh scream one and scream two uh the internet was just kind of in its early days by scream three i mean this was 2000 everyone had it there was rumors that everyone and their mother was supposed to be a part of this film which i actually have a funny story uh for those of you guys who own the movie it's a christina ricci movie called desert blue on the back of it it has the cast and i mean Always in, in parentheses, they'll have what the, what they're known for. Well, a funny fact about that movie is that it has Kate Hudson, and then in quotations, it has Scream 3. So I have no idea what role she was supposed to be going for. I'm guessing it'd probably be either the role of Cotton's girlfriend here, played by Kelly Rutherford, or possibly the Sarah Darling role, who ends up being um, Jenny McCarthy. But I, I honestly don't know. Hmm, interesting. 
and uh, before we saw Cotton with some cell phones, and this this isn't really something I don't think Kevin, you of I have ever talked about or touched on or anything, but the uh, the presence of electronics or technology in films. I mean, it can really date data film. What are your feelings on that? Like, I mean, even just somebody somebody with an iPod. I mean, a couple years a couple years down the road, somebody watching a movie with an iPod that's like, oh, remember when iPods looked like that? Blah blah blah. And then you know, it just kind of it dates it, but also gives it kind of a charm. What What do you think? Um, I agree. The problem with using any kind of technology in a horror film is that as soon as you come out, you're instantly dated. It doesn't matter what it is, if it is an iPod or a computer or whatever, you know, pr pretty, pretty much it, it's, it's dated the second you use it. So here we have, um, in the background, we have Creed playing the song, uh, What If? They actually did a full Scream style music video for this song that featured David Arquette. Um, it was a big, a fairly big single at the time. I remember it making like the top 10 on MTV. And yeah, this is kind of the first kind of, I guess, although Scream and Scream 2 won MTV Movie Awards, but this was kind of the first one that they kind of used that for... Um, as much publicity as possible. Hmm. Were you a big Creed fan? I liked Creed. <laughs> um, Creed did a lot of horror movie soundtracks. They did Scream 3. They did The Faculty. They did Halloween H2O. Um, they were definitely big, big dimension fans, I guess. Hmm. So, Steve, this is one thing that we haven't talked about before, is that this is the first and only only movie in the series that uses the voice changer box where the killer not only can do the ghost face voice but he can record someone else's voice and do full sentences and sound like that person do you like that do you think it adds attracts to this and i mean even 14 years later we're still not quite <laughs> up to this kind of technology um how do you feel about it well, as of right now, and we'll, well, well, let's touch on this again at the end of the film, since I haven't watched it in quite a while. But right now, I'm saying not a big fan. I don't know if this, is this Kevin McAllister playing Scream? Kevin McAllister, no. <laughs> okay, I'm one of the few people that I like the voice changer box. I think that it's something that adds to the series, and I think that it also adds some suspense of when you hear somebody on the phone, is it really them or is it Ghostface trying to be another person? It is a bit far-fetched. I'll be the first to admit that. Um, but I, I think it works. I mean, this kind, this one out of the entire series is kind of the most out there, both comedic-wise and just kind of... I On a, on a lot of levels, it's kind of... Um, is, is a little loony, but I, I like that. I love the title 100% Cotton. Well, it even says on the phone 110%. <laughs> That's good. So I, I still remember the Wes Craven commentary, which if you haven't listened to it, he actually gives a good commentary for all of them. Um, uh, Leo Schreiber, actually, he's like, I got to take off the blazer because I've been working out for this other <laughs> movie. I got to show off my muscles. <laughs> so um, for you ladies out there and some of the male fans, <laughs> there's a um, little bit of beefcake for you. Hmm. It's a good looking sweater. It fits in all the right areas. <laughs> Cotton does look the best in this movie, I think. It is funny. I mean, it, it's always great to have a, a franchise where we get recurring characters and just to see how they change and develop, um, not only character-wise, but looks-wise as well. And we'll be, we'll be touched on probably most of them as far as how they've changed throughout the years. Yeah, I think that we can all definitely agree that Cotton looks the best in this movie. <laughs> He's kind of grown up. He's not like the weird, awkward guy that he was in Scream 2. And in Scream 1, he's just in the back of the cog car yeah. for like five seconds. He's successful now. He's got 100% Cotton going on for him. So are you a, a fan of her doing the scene in the lingerie? Yes, this is, this is a, good, <laughs> a good choice by Wes. So a lot of people were, I guess, up for this role. If you listen to IMDb, I know one of them was Shannon Doherty. Interesting. 
I believe also Charisma Carpenter. You guys might know her as Cordelia from Buffy. I believe she was up for this role as well. And also, I don't think this is true at all. There's a rumor on IMDb that um, Kate Winslet was up for this role. Kate Winslet, wow. I do not Classy. think that that's true. Especially being after Titanic, I don't know if she would have done a kind of three-minute role in a slasher sequel. Hmm. I could be wrong, but um, that doesn't seem... That seems very uh, fan-made-up. Hmm. So, one thing I, I, I thought about earlier today, and I really wanted to touch on this. Um, in certain films, we have the villain who, whether it's, mm, I don't know, maybe the look, the clothes, the Real mask. quick, this is my favorite title. It's a good looking <laughs> title. Okay, but go on. Okay, so in, in a lot of films, you know, Friday the 13th, um, Nightmare on Elm Street, um, the, the villain kind of evolves look-wise. Are you glad Ghostface stayed true pretty much throughout the film? Would you have liked maybe a little switch up here or there? <coughs> well, there was a rumor for Screen 4 that like a lot of publicity stills, and they were even selling like the the costume at Walmart and stuff, was the 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 um the scarecrow ghostface. I remember that, yeah. Which I don't know if that was gonna be used for the barn um scarathon, which we'll probably talk about more when we do the the Screen 4 commentary. What I want to know is, okay, this is an amazing house of Sydney's. And this is kind of out in the middle of nowhere. She works for this women's crisis center. Like, is that the only job she has? How is she able to afford this? Lawsuits? Possibly. Maybe from selling the rights to the sta for the Stad movies. Oh, yeah. I like making in the, good money. I like in the background, there is the kind of program from the play that she was in. Hmm. And she is still wearing, I believe, I have to check again, well, maybe not in this scene, but I know that she does later. She wears um, the, the the necklace that Derek gave her in Scream 2. Hmm. She's going by a different name, Laura. Oh. So one thing that I did want to touch <laughs> on. You remember those Mac computers? Those I vaguely remember. Mac computers? We were actually talking about the other day, <laughs> like just randomly. I, I was hanging out with my brother. I remember there was like, whatever happened to Gateway? <laughs> and it's like one of those things where like I completely forgot about them where like you'd make your own computer and arrive in a box exists, like yeah the, the, the cow box or what about like the the dude you're getting a Dell guy oh he got in trouble oh yeah like marijuana yeah, right yeah so here's Courtney Cox she got a little makeover do you like it well I'm thinking Courtney Cox in <laughs> in Scream 2 is still tops by far not not sure about the hair going on here. You don't not, like the bangs? Not a fan. What about the rest? Still got a good looking she body. She got really skinny. Like yeah. almost too much. So if you were, say, Courtney in here or Nev or I guess the actual characters, would you... Would you embrace maybe your newfound fame or infamous status, or would you maybe shy off? And well, it would depend. Work on, at a women's crisis center, and that I would probably calls. work at a women's crisis center and take phone calls. Um, I think it all depends on whether or not you can make it work for you. See, the picture in there is a what from screen too. Bangs? You don't like them. Huh? So here we get something that only this kind of movie does: is that. There's like hints where with each murder, they the the killer leaves a photograph for each death. Well, one thing that was it was originally in the original script, which this movie went through many, many rewrites. It started out with Kevin Williamson, and then a, he got too busy, and then it ended up being Aaron Kruger. This is the only one of the series that's not written by Kevin Williamson. Um, I... I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I actually think that Aaron does a very good job. I, I don't think that Scream 3 really gets the credit that it deserves. It's kind of fun. But anyway, in one of the original openings, uh, there's there was only supposed to be Cotton. The Cotton's girlfriend was added at a later date, and but they only kind of casually mention the girlfriend, and from here on out, it's just kind of like Cotton died. So, I don't know. It's kind of a, a little bit of a continuity issue, I guess. But, I mean, she wasn't famous, so I don't know how much they would talk about her. So, hmm. 
So this is kind of the fir- the only one in the series. It's kind of a movie within a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of like backstage Hollywood. We got the making of Stab 3 as we're watching Scream 3. I still want to see the Stab movies. I think they'd be fun. I know. Yeah, that, that would be... It would be something interesting to kind of put together. Here's a little cameo by B horror movie master Roger Corman. Who doesn't want any violence in cinema? Hmm. We got Scott Foley as the director. Kevin, you might know. I've always wondered when there's like a movie within a movie scene. Um, I mean, right now, I guess in this one, we don't see too much equipment, but do you think they're going out and getting prop equipment, or are they just reusing what they have, or maybe a little both? Um, I think it all depends on what scale. I mean, this was a $40 million per production. I'm pretty sure that if they wanted to for this, I mean, they pretty much recreate this entire town for this set, and it's kind of like a set within a set, so I'm pretty sure that they could do whatever they wanted. So what do you think of Jenny McCarthy? Jenny's looking good. <laughs> I can always go for some uh, some young Jenny McCarthy. How about um, Emily Mortimer as Sydney? <laughs> she pulled off the good Sydney. Who do you th- who do you think's more <laughs> who do you think's more attractive? Um, which Dewey? Well, fake Dewey's <laughs> a little more a little more ba, a little more badass. A little more hunky. Hmm, there you go. The slicked hair. The mustache. A little more filled out. So here we got Courtney. Look at that of, yellow. It's very pantsuit. bright. Okay, do you think, this is a good question here. Do you think Zachary Allen could pull off a yellow pantsuit? Oh, I think he could. I think he could also pull off the... The purse with the camera in it. But I think that he'd much Whoa. rather be Parker Posey. Hmm. Okay, first time watching this, Kevin, did you have um, visions of Debbie Salt in your head? For who? Parker, <laughs> For... she kind of comes up and bar- bombards her. And uh, uh... No, I was like freaking out. I'm like, that's Cordy's hair for the first one, and that's her outfit for the <laughs> first one. Um, so pretty much every single fan out there, um, even the ones who don't like this movie, love kind of the rivalry between uh, Courtney and Parker, uh, who, according to um, our good friend Andrew, he had read somewhere online that they did not get along. And I just have a feeling that as intense as Parker is, I just have a feeling that she's very much a method actress mm-hmm. and said, like, my character is not friends with you in the movie. I won't be friends with you outside of the movie. Can't get past those bangs. It's going to be driving me nuts. What about Parker's <laughs> hair? Her original scream hair. I can roll with that. So you think partner, Parker's looking better than Courtney? Yeah. Okay, so we have Dewey, Scream 3. Kevin, thoughts? <laughs> Honky? No, he's... He, he's got the sports coat on. He's got the polo. For, for me, at least, he didn't start out very high in each movie. He drops a little mm-hmm. bit. And 4, it's... We, we'll get into that later. Courtney pulled it together for 4. Oh, yeah. Yeah, poor Courtney. Hair, makeup, everything. Nothing's really working for her. So, do you know any backstory on on that? Was it? Uh, I know they filmed this was right after West? their honeymoon. Was it, was it anybody in particular who went for this look? I don't know, honestly. Um, I know that Courtney laughs about it now and agrees that she did not look good. Hmm. 
But yeah, there's one scene that's actually later on in this movie that was actually their, I think their first scene that they shot, and you can tell they're both much tanner because hmm. they had just gotten back from their honeymoon, which sadly they're no longer together. How long were they together for? I think about 10 years. Well, that's pretty good. So pretty much from Scream 3 to <laughs> Scream 4. Yeah. And then rumor has it that David was kind of Cheating on the set of Screen 4 with mm. some... Um, some hoochies? Some college extras. <laughs> yeah. He said they were on a break. Just so here we got a bunch meat. of cameos. If we look in the background with the camera coming up um, that actually walks past. Um, Jay and Son and Bob, right there in the background, there's Wes. <laughs> 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 So this movie's full of cameos. We got those two. We got Wes. We got um, Carrie Fisher coming later. Mm. Um, we got Roger Corman. Do you think it's too much? Do you think it works for this? I think they're kind of going all in as far as the kind of the Hollywood scene. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So. Outside of the original, kind of that scene, the bedroom scene, um, this is really the only other scene that she's got with her dad. Would you have liked to have seen him in Scream 2? Do you think it's a good break? Nah, I, mean, I don't, I I mean, don't she mind was, it. She was in college. I mean, mm -hmm. there wouldn't have really been a role for him. I mean, the rumor was that we had talked about before was that Scream 4 has her coming back not only for a book tour, but for her father's funeral, who died. Mm -hmm. um, and that was completely cut out. Um, of the series, kind of Scream 3 and Scream 4 went through the most from kind of pre-production. Because I don't know how many of you guys out there know this, Scream 4 originally took a much darker route. The original scene was... Sydney having a dinner party with friends and Ghostface attacks and she kills Ghostface and it turns out the Ghostface was just a fan who was obsessed with her. And that's kind of what forced her into hiding. And that was kind of Kevin Williams' idea. All of that was cut out. There was this new opening with Cotton, which I think I think the Cotton opening works for what it is. I don't have any I don't have any major problems with it. A uh, major problem that I do have, I do don't like this supernatural <laughs> stuff with Sydney's eh. mom. You don't? Do you like it? No, no. I remember you saying that you thought it was really scary. <laughs> Maybe her that her hair. Who was Sydney's mom? Yeah. I think you slept with someone that looked like that. Why Possibly. say nightgown? Yeah. I'm sure you're looking at. Remember that face. You woke up the next morning. <laughs> that face looking at you. <laughs> This is just, yeah. I, it's fine. I mean, it's it's okay, it's just, it's, I guess. I think it's just too far out of the scream realm. Well, I mean, this movie, this, I mean, they do pull it off the fact later that um, this is just a dream. So one thing that's surprising is, so Courtney Cox's hair looks awful, and it looks like it's a wig, because it's just that bad. Nev Campbell's wig, uh, hair actually is a wig. Which they actually did a really good job with because she actually cut her hair short and dyed it kind of blondish brown for Drowning Mona. Which, so this is a this is a wig and it actually looks very realistic. If I didn't know that, I would think that that was her hair. Um, so, so poor Cherokee. <laughs> our friend Sean's like, he's probably the most underrated person or actually animal in the entire series. So, you like her. Sarah Darling's car? Yeah. Would you like Sarah Darling's outfit here? That's looking good. A good purple top showing out the goods. That ass. Mm hmm. So, Jenny McCarthy, rumor has it, mm. once again, I don't know how true this is, but rumor has it is that she turned down. She was originally supposed to have the Carmen Electra role in Scary <laughs> Movie, but she turned it down to actually be part of what she quoted the real thing, which was Scream 3. And what's funny is that she actually ends up being in Scary Movie 3 in the opening. It's her and Pamela Anderson. Hmm. So kind of funny that she was she was able to do this and then also go back to that series and do part three of both. That's pretty good. 
to. I think this was a, a better choice. You should get the best of both worlds. So that'd be you with the... Uh... No. <laughs> so we talk about having to shoot the scene many times that I think you in the final cut. She just say Ronan a couple times instead of Roman. <laughs> 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 oh, Jenny McCarthy, you tried. So this is his director's office? You're a director? Do you have an office like this? Oh, I, I would love to have a big office like this with a broken trophy. <laughs> I don't know. See, yeah, I like the voice changer box. So, like, they're able to do this of pretending to be the director on the phone. Put some tape on it. It's all Would good. you be okay with that? So she's mad that she's the chick who gets killed second, and she's only <laughs> in two scenes. I know our friend Zachary Allen does love some Jenny McCarthy. I thought you were going to say fish sticks. I don't know if he likes fish sticks. <laughs> I'm sure he's had a few fish sticks. So, yeah, uh, Jenny McCarthy, uh, obviously she gets the wrong Hitchcock reference. She says vertigo when she's obviously talking about Psycho. And she grabs her boob because, I mean, that's obviously what, for step three, that's what she was hired for. So, you know, more power to her and more power to her breasts. Um, I actually think this is a very fun scene. It kind of plays with the... You know, the, this is Hollywood. I mean, she's going to go into the prop room. I mean, obviously, all the props are fake. So, yeah, she mentions the fact that, you know, that she's mad that there's constant rewrites and that there's all these script changes. And Wes actually mentions in the other commentary that it literally became, the script was like a rainbow where there'd be a different color for the script pages for each day that the script pages changed. And by the end, there was something like 25 different colors where there'd be different versions of colors to signify which pages changed for which actors. Which, I mean, you know, this movie, I wouldn't say that it had a troubled production, nothing like, like Wes Craven's Curse, which mm -hmm. um, that's kind of a, a horror story in and of itself, what that movie went through. But I still remember this little scene right here. I believe Jenny McCarthy was on Jay Leno, and this is the first clip that I had ever seen of Scream Three, and it made me so excited. Mm -hmm. And this is that what they what they showed right here. Yeah, very very cool idea. Do you know if this was an original idea from the the first script from uh, from the get go, or was this one of the rewrites? You have any idea? Well, I I know that it's Kevin a cool Williams, concept. Kevin Williamson only did a. a treatment and then Aaron Kruger did his kind of pass the script and I believe although Wes doesn't get a story credit on this um, I think that he really helped Aaron get into kind of the okay well this you know I've done this this is three times you know I know how these characters you know would react and I think that he really kind of helped him with that process and I wouldn't be surprised for characters like Parker if more than half of that is completely improvised. Mm -hmm. So here we got the fake knives. Mm. Nobody likes a rubbery knife. <laughs> you, don't want a you, don't, you don't want a floppy knife. What are you going to do with a floppy knife? Mm -hmm. It is cool. The, the cool concept of being on a movie set and all these props. I mean, it gives you so much to work with as, as a filmmaker. So we did talk about another commentary how for the most part... Um, the deaths, the, the series becomes less and less violent. Um, 
you know, a little bit of blood right it here, a stabbing. Um, you know, the first scream I talked about went through 50 gallons of blood. The second one went through 30. This one only went through 10. So, I mean, it became much more dry. And I, I think it actually works for this movie because it does try to play up the comedy. But, yeah, I do think that Columbine was a big factor. How about this alpha for Courtney? Hmm. Showing off some skin here. I think this might have been the scene that that Wes was talking about in the commentary mm -hmm. that they were darker. I think it was actually. Think, they yeah, do look her, a little. Her chest looks a little freckly. <laughs> so Kim, you kind of mentioned the whole Columbine thing. Maybe that's why they toned that down. In your mind, whether it's you know just a human being or a filmmaker, is that something you would have done? You would have pushed for, or would you would have just kind of wanted to make the movie that you want to make and hope that the fans react well to it? Or I guess your your thoughts on it. It's a kind of it's a hard hard kind of well, to talk about. I think with this movie, I mean, they are kind of taking a social stance of saying, okay, well, I mean, obviously, you know, spoiler alert. I'm sure you guys have seen this movie a million times, or at least. Watch it at least once before listening to this commentary. But, I mean, the director is the killer. And it kind of, you know, it doesn't come right out and say, you know, horror movies are responsible for actions. I don't believe Wes thinks that. But it definitely kind of gives that idea out there and kind of, you know, does, does make you wonder a little bit, you know. I do like the fact that there aren't any easy answers with the Scream series. And it does kind of keep it open open to interpretation mm -hmm. like in general though if something happens some violence happens in the real world and then very soon after that maybe a violent movie comes out do you think there's much correlation to that i know there's studies on uh, no i don't both think sides it's, but i don't think it's at all connected you know like the first you know scream said you know Movies don't create cycles. Movies just make cycles more creative, and I firmly believe that. So, how do you like Parker's house? How do you like her outfit I here? Love the pants. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, we got Putty from Seinfeld. So how do you feel about what Parker brings to this movie? Again, it's it's just kind of fits in this crazy Scream 3 film. I mean, we got a little, like we were talking about, they, it really does play at the comedy. It's a little more, it's different. It's, like I said before, it's my, very quirky, My friends so. can quote every single line that she does. Which friends? Zachary Allen? Yes, and Zachary Allen actually said that that's what he would like to do to people. It's just <laughs> jump in their arms. <laughs> He's never tried that with me before. <laughs> Maybe he should try next time. Yeah. <laughs> so here Dewey's got another kind of a long speech. It's a little monologue. He's got the limp from mm -hmm. being stabbed in the back twice. Poor Dewey. He's still kicking, though. <laughs> Do <Dude> drop. <laughs> <laughs> you like putty in this? Oh, yeah. You always love him. It's funny because I, I just feel like he's playing putty here. Yeah. <laughs> he's always... He has such a kind of distinct look, voice. It all just meshes into one character from the next. He's so big. Like, I yes. believe him as kind of a, a bodyguard. So Patrick Dempsey is the cop. There we go. Is that McSteamy or McDreamy? I think it's Dreamy. Dreamy. Yeah, the, the other guy is McSteamy, like the, the beefy guy. <laughs> 
you think he's McDreamy? This is kind of the movie that kind of brought him back. He was he was popular in the 80s, and then he did Scream 3, and then, um, so this kind of, like, brought him out there, and then he became really, really popular after Grey's Anatomy. Hmm. So there was kind of, so he kind of becomes kind of a love interest for Sydney in this movie. Uh, there was kind of a debate in Scream 4 whether or not he should come back or he doesn't come back, and should he have been mentioned? Um, your thoughts? I had no problem with him not being mentioned. I'm fine with it, too. I mean, you know, if she broke up with him, you know, nine, ten years ago, yeah. I mean, how many times did we talk about our, our exes from ten years ago? Okay. Did you ever hear anything about, I'm curious, as far as how the, I guess, producers and people behind Friends um, took to, to Courtney playing this role well, they make, open arms? Or? They make fun of Friends in Scream 2 and in Scream 3. Like, right here, like, they talk about the fact that, you know, this this might get shut down and, you know, she can always go back to must-see TV. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure that they are probably fine with it. I mean, I know all of the girls and Friends were, were really close and still are to this day. I, I love Parker's looks. Like she doesn't even have to say anything, and just looking at her in the background is just so funny. Hmm. Hmm. She definitely got one of those faces. Yeah, she's very, face. very much a character actor. Mm -hmm. So he's a director, and her line, um, how many, how many girls have said that to you? What's well, gonna come up? Maybe it's not this scene. I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> All of them? Uh, no. <laughs> Remind me not I'll to sleep with him again. <laughs> You like Cherokee? I've never been a big fan of Golden Retrievers. Oh, I love Golden Retrievers. They're my favorite dog. Our friend Tim actually has a Golden Retriever <laughs> named Noah. That could be Noah. We could be already make a Scream 3. So I'm wondering, how would he have gotten her mother's voice? Yeah, see, everything about that, I'm just... That's the only one. I'm just All not of the a big fan rest, of any of it. I'm I'm not a big fan of it. I mean, well, technically though, he. I mean, the killer's the director. He would have been around all of these other people. He would have easily gotten their voices. Um, I think the rest works. And I love that she like tells her to, or she is in her bomb, but tells her to turn on the news. I mean, this is kind of one of these movie cliches where. You know it's going to be the exact right news, and they're going to be at exactly the right moment where they're going to talk about something that's pivotally happening hmm. in the story. That's a... Uh, it's a classic. That's what it is. That's a definite movie cliche. Do you keep a gun in your drawer in case Ghostface attacks? Uh, no. Don't. Quite a few guns throughout this. I like this, this song. This is by though. Fuel. I have the soundtrack. Big Fuel fan. Maybe some Switchfoot. No, that's a different <laughs> genre. You love all that stuff. I I did I didn't mind Switchfoot back in the day. I liked Fuel better. There's not a lot of songs in the soundtrack I liked, but but yeah, yeah Parker's got another great scene here. There's just so much going on with what Parker's wearing. Do you think this Sydney's attractive? Yeah. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the dress, but... Just want to have some cleavage? Yeah, not enough. I like Jenny. What about Parker's outfit? She's, 
she's definitely got some good or she definitely has some style I guess whether it's good or bad or mediocre we'll let Zachary Allen be the judge of that well I honestly think that with her I wouldn't be surprised if she's just like oh I'm gonna pick this to go with this to go with this because it really kind of works for this kind of B movie actress who thinks that she's kind of more than what she is um, I oh, guarantee yeah. that she, like you just know her character that she'd be one of those people that's like, oh, I'm going to put all this weird stuff together and I'm going to start my own fashion trend. Mm. Which, speaking of fashion trends, this might be Courtney Cox's worst outfit. It just keeps getting worse and worse for her. <laughs> She's got on uh, kind of an ivory turtleneck <laughs> with red leather pants. Where is this coming from? Do you like those pants? You yeah, own a I, pair of those, I, don't you? I don't mind a good pair of leather pants. As far as the turtleneck goes. A turtleneck with a hoodie? Different story. And She's leather cold. pants? It's I don't think those night. leather pants are going to warm me up. <laughs> that is a good picture, isn't it? If, if Parker ever did horror conventions, that publicity hmm. stuff right there is what I'd have her sign. Perfect. So Parker, as Jennifer Jolie is just excited to see Courtney again, her inspiration. Hair. That was a good open mouth look. So I will admit, I actually talked about this on Twitter a couple days ago as I was re-watching this. Um, the Scream franchise is the first and last time ever that I heard anything about cloning cell phones. <laughs> they mentioned that in the first movie. They mentioned it in this movie. I still don't know if that's a real thing. I don't really get it. Um, but, you know, maybe that was the thing back in the day. I mean, this was 2000. I didn't, I didn't even have a cell phone until 2001. So, Could you clone a beeper? I don't I, a pager. <laughs> Could you clone a cell a uh, car phone? Maybe. Sydney's mom was looking pretty hot back in the day. Those are real pictures of her. Not too shabby. So you think those are real leather, or do you think those are pleather? <clears throat> we gotta go with pleather. So here they find out that, that yeah, um, Sydney's mom, Maureen, was here at the studio. So was she an actress? Um, so it kind of kind of adds into kind of the whole um, Hollywood theme. So at any point, do you kind of miss the whole younger cast, high school, college age? No, no, I don't. Not at all? I mean, well. I mean, they go back to it in four. They do go back to it in four. And I'm, so I've watched these movies many times. See, Cornell is a lot better there. Um, so I've watched these movies many times. And I went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth of kind of ranking the series I've come to the point where I think that I'm kind of, I'm definitely outnumbered in the fact that I do think that I like Scream 3 better than Scream 4, uh, which we'll talk more about Scream 4 when we do the commentary next week. I think Scream 4 tries a little bit too hard to kind of cover all of the basis, bases, and um, it doesn't really, my problem with Scream 4 is that it doesn't give the original cast enough to do, so... Mm. Um, I do think that this movie does a better job of, especially Courtney. I mean, Courtney's kind of always been one of the fan favorites. And, you know, up until the finale, I would, I think that Courtney's got much more screen time than even Nev in this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Nev, I think that part of her contract was that she would only do this movie if she could work, I believe it was 10 days. 
because she had just gotten done with Drowning Mona and she had another movie right after this one. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I always love the, the younger cast and, you know, that kind of atmosphere. But, I mean, if you're going to have, you know, four movies, it's, it's a nice break. I agree. So, Kevin, this scene coming up, you're a, you're a big fan of, right? Uh, no, I actually don't like this scene at all. Um, so the house is about to blow up, and they're getting the the power go the power's out, and they're getting faxes that are that are giving them messages about the oh you're not going to want to be in the house because the last one is that the killer will give mercy to the one who smells the gas, and he lights the match, and then the house blows up. This is a lot of this is overly elaborate, I think, for a screen movie. I mean, how would he have all this planned? How would he know where they all are? Um, it's just, this is the one scene, especially in this movie, besides the, the supernatural stuff, I just don't feel like it works at all. And it's a fax machine. Were, were they, when people actually send messages via fax? I, like, if the lights are out, wasn't that the like power a business thing? Yeah. No, I think that if she was like a an actress, I could see like them getting faxes, so was like, that like especially a text. Like, no, it wasn't like a text. <laughs> it would they would be like script. It'd be like pages, like printing out pages, like your printer. Whoever smells the gas, like how would he know that they would go for it? That he would go for that, and then he blows up. I do like the house explosion, though. That looks good. That's I'll give really them that. Cool. Yeah. And we're coming up to my one of my favorite Parker lines. I can't stop rolling down the hill. <laughs> you know that was improvised. So here we're, uh, this, I don't really like this either. The killer's right outside, but he's still There's time a lot to of leave. things you're not liking. No, there, I, I like <laughs> more than I don't like. It's the stuff in the middle here that I just don't think works all that well. Um, but yeah, he, so the killer, <laughs> the killer rolls underneath the, the truck and then is still able to leave this um, photo. So do you think overall the whole, I guess, schemes maybe that the ghost face is trying to pull off it are they're all a little too elaborate? I don't mind leaving the photo, but like, I don't know how he would be able to kind of drop on the ground, roll, and then where where does he have this photo this whole time? And then, so Angelina comes out of nowhere and she's like, oh, like, what's this? Like... <laughs> My lawyer liked that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, where did she come from? <laughs> they were like all rolling on the hill at the same time. <laughs> but I know originally... I don't, this is one of those things where, like, I don't know if this is just kind of fan creation, but originally that, um, so it's going to be the same kind of story at the end, where the, the story right now is that the director ends up being Sid's brother, blah, 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 blah. It was somebody that Sid's mom had sex with in Hollywood. She got pregnant, kind of left her son there, and then wanted her own life in Woodsboro, and that's when she had Sydney. Uh, but it was really supposed to be... According to fan rumor, it was originally supposed to be daughter, and it was supposed to be the girl playing Sydney in the movie, which I think that makes that actually ties in a little bit better, and it kind of feeds into that, you know, her wanting to become her. I just think I like that more than no, I was wrong. I believe that this is actually the first thing that they shot, 
because they're looking very, very tan here, especially Courtney. <laughs> Maybe the other one was a second. When they show Courtney again, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> it's a good glow. She's got a lot of glow. But yeah, they both look very tan here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> actually, Courtney looks better here than she does in the rest of the movie. Yeah, I, I thought that right when she walked in the room, actually. So maybe she needed that glow. Maybe. Look pale otherwise. Hit up that tanning bed. There you go. Got a couple mo movie posters in the background. I hate this other cat. He's so stupid. Yeah, well, he's like a fat Ben Stiller looking one. He was... um. <clears throat> So in between Scream 2 and Scream 3, um, Wes Craven did a non-horror movie. He did it with Meryl Streep called Music of the Heart. And that actor was actually in Music of the Heart. And he actually liked working with him so much that he mm. brought him over to Scream 3. Last night you were almost charcoal. <laughs> so this scene right here is kind of the original three reuniting for the first time and i actually think this is a really it's a sweet scene and i think it's kind of a scene that was really i mean we'll talk about it more once we get to scream four here's where she's wearing derek's necklace but we'll talk about more when we get to scream four but there is kind of this feeling of being reunited and i, I kind of miss that from scream four i never really felt that from the characters um, so I felt like that was something that was kind of missing from that movie. Hmm. Interesting. She still got that same suede jacket she had in Scream 2. It's a good jacket. So we got to... So which one do you think Nev looks the best in? You think Courtney mm. looks the best in 2? Definitely uh, 2. I remember... Oh... <sighs> Yeah, I mean, Nev, Nev looked good in two as well. You gotta admit. You think she looks good in this one? College Nev? Yeah. I mean, Nev always looks good. She does. She actually looks really in four, she too. She ages very, very well. She's 40 now. That's crazy. Yeah, that is <laughs> bizarre to even comprehend. She kind of put the kibosh on the Scream 5 rumor. She's like, we kind of did what we could with four. It wasn't as successful as what they were hoping. Um, she feels like she's kind of getting older, that if the, the series does go on, it probably won't be with the originals. But mm -hmm. she wishes them best of luck with whatever they do. But yeah, it doesn't sound like she's going to be a part of it. But I know for many years, that's what they were saying about Scream 4. So sure. it's Hollywood. Anything can happen. Yeah. I mean, even, even, if, even if that happens, which, I mean, it'd be cool to have her back for even a small role. But um, with a Scream 5, even if it is a bomb... I mean, just the the lead up, the excitement you feel. I mean, just that that I guess that rush of knowing that there's going to be another scream, and you get excited about going to the theaters. That's what would all it, matters. Would to it me. still be scream for you without these original characters? No, I think it would feel very empty to me. I might enjoy yeah. it as kind of uh, almost like a spin off, but right. I don't think it would ever feel like part of the series. Mm -mm. You like that guy there? You liked his line? Yeah, he's got a good line there. So you don't like him? Ben Stiller? Yeah, no, no, not a big big fan of this guy. I always want I always would love to actually go in one of these lots and just it always just seems like there's so much going on, it's so chaotic half the time. So it'd be kinda it'd be cool to be on there. Always people everywhere. You ever done any, any of the tours? I haven't. No? So here's Randy's sister, Heather Maserato. <laughs> Zachary Allen actually met her. Really? Where? Yeah. I don't know. I think the streets of New York City. <laughs> he's on the he's on the <laughs> streets in New York now. <laughs> Scary movies, one oh one, VHS tape. So many people might remember her oh, from Welcome to Dollhouse. House. Yeah, I remember them showing this clip a lot in the trailer and kind of giving the tease of, you know, is Randy really dead? Did she come back? Actually, out of, I'm, did he come back? Um, out of all the scenes in this movie, I don't know why,
But I love how Nev looks in this scene more than any other scene in the movie. And I actually think that how she looks in this scene might be the best she's looked in the series. It seems very convenient that she showed up with this tape hmm. at exactly of, the right time. A lot of convenience in this movie. You're telling me that's a wig. Yeah, that's a Nav Campbell's hair is a wig in this. About that. Look how look at how tan Dewey looks in this scene. Just got back from Jamaica. Yeah, Nav's hair is a wig in this. She had drowning Mona hair. So here he's given some trilogy rules. How do you feel about this? Um, I don't mind it. I I, I kind of enjoy all the. Uh, I thought you didn't like the uh, ID. Um, it it doesn't even have anything to do with Randy really. I just kind of like the whole. They know this is a, a horror movie, and they're talking about horror movies within the horror movie. So I I, I enjoy that. I actually like Randy better when it's kind of just one scene with him, and when he's <laughs> not interacting with other characters. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't look, Nav looks great here. She does. Have you ever made one of these videos? Posted on YouTube, maybe? Like talking to the camera? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Have you? No. Have you ever made a vine perhaps i haven't made a vine i know you did i made one and then i thought i was going to be into it but no <laughs> yeah, it didn't I become a viral I, sensation i think i ended my uh didn't you do like faces vine with like sloppy joe max yeah it was a slop pan of sloppy joes and i Yuck. made it into like a smiling sloppy joe face disgusting no sloppy joes are delicious and I'm kind of craving one right now. I go for some tacos right now. Some fresco tacos. <laughs> or maybe a lean pocket. Oh, lean pocket. Um, have you had the breakfast Taco Bell? Ugh, no, that's disgusting. You've never oh, had it. So this is my favorite scene of the whole movie. And I think Again? This is, this is really my favorite <laughs> scene. Um, this is probably 80% of the people that like this movie. This is their favorite scene, I would say. At least. By far, hands down. Actually, her speech actually makes a lot of sense. Because if you were the killer, wouldn't you want to kill the real Gail Weathers before the fake one? You would. Just find a way. Hmm. I bet they did hate each other. <laughs> you think I you hope were, so. You think you were like this behind the scenes? Yeah. I feel like they didn't even so, talk so to if each this, other. So if this was me and you, do you think you'd be Courtney and I'd be Parker? Yeah, she's like the more sexy, strong. Parker, that's me. Powerful. No, I'm no Courtney. Success, bad hair. Successful. <laughs> <laughs> bad hair, bad outfit. That's <laughs> you. She, that's, what's wrong with that outfit? That's not bad, but. Look at Parker's outfit. She's showing off some skin at least. Yeah. Little belly button. Here we got Carrie Fisher. Oh, yeah. Who's hilarious in this. She makes fun of herself. <laughs> so yeah, starting with that last scene, from here on out, Parker and Courtney are just kind of perfect comedic chemistry. I just love all of their interactions. 
pants down to 50 bucks. I'd take that. She says no. <laughs> so she's got the ring worth two grand. Are you going to help go with this or not? <laughs> <laughs> she does and we find out her real name in this it's not um, Jennifer Jolie it's Judy Jurgenstern. Judy Jurgenstern. it's a good name what, what would be your stage name sounds very European <laughs> so do you know what your stage name would be I don't know Sure yet, something cool. Ryan Rhodes. Ryan Rhodes. Is there any sort of formula? I know there's always like the, the porn name formulas as far as I like a pet, and like a street name. name. If I ever did porn, I'd use the name Steve Golds. <laughs> That'd be a good one. <laughs> I always remember my favorite one. Kevin and I used to know know somebody we uh a long time ago, a long time ago, and his his poor name would have been Dick Timbers. <laughs> it's still the best one I've ever heard. What would yours have been? I'm pretty happy with mine. Mine mine would be Lucky Washington. Lucky Washington. I guess mine would have been Rusty Shady. That doesn't work at all. Did you have one before that? Sunshine? Sunshine? Did you have a Sunshine? You might have. <laughs> Was that your Care Bear name? <laughs> sunshine Shady. That would have <laughs> been your porn name, I think. No, I'm thinking of somebody else who had a dog named Sunshine. It could have been Scooter. Scooter Shady? That works. Scooter Shady. When's he a Scooter Braun? There you go. So here we get the two Sydney's meeting each other, and she talks about how this is kind of her one chance in Hollywood, and that she kind of wanted to make her proud of the role. And it's it's actually kind of a nice, sweet scene. And I think that if they would have played it, that her being the killer at the end, I think that the scene would have kind of meant even more. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's cool because, I mean, we got these two sweet people um, and then it's, you know, we get the kind of parallel of the two biatches of um, the Gale Weather group and uh, it's kind of a cool contrast. So who would you sleep with to make, make it in Hollywood? A friend of mine said on Twitter that he's got to get used to giving blowjobs if he wants to get anywhere in Hollywood. Was that you? That was not me that said that. It was somebody else. Zachary Allen? No, it was actually another Zach, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's got it on he's got it on Twitter, so I mean it's it's public knowledge, but I'll just leave it at that. But I well watching this, it's always kind of creepy of me just thinking like if you were Sydney mm -hmm. walking into this this set and it's dark and it's eerily similar to like a you know, kind of like a horrific time in your life. Mm -hmm. Like, how, how creepy and how well, many goosebumps would you get? This is actually our friend Cody. This is his favorite scene. It's just kind of her f kind of being forced to, uh, to confront her, her demons of Woodsboro again. Like I said, I'm, I'm missing Woodsboro a little bit. But, but like yeah, I said, it's a nice right kind here. of break. It's a nice little break. You don't get Woodsboro at all until... Yeah, but you still you still had that kind of small town feel. That was a big college. Yeah, it wasn't that big. Did you see that auditorium? <laughs> that was a big college. It wasn't big. It was like Lawrence. Really, of the three of the I mean of the four movies, um, Scream Two is the only one that doesn't really have any. Um, I like Woodsboro set elements. Um, we do have Woodsboro characters and we do have 
Lori Metcalf. Creed. As. Creed poster in the background for Kevin. Did you I, have that poster? I did not have that bed? poster. Um, but it's funny that they would have that. Like, like why would Sydney have had that in her room? I don't even think Creed was a band back in '96. So yeah, I do like it how they they do have the two doors that kind of go into each other, like the original screen. Mm -hmm. Um, and it kind of does play what I one thing that I do like about this movie a lot is much like the Jenny McCarthy stuff and then also the stuff that's coming up with the scene with Neb, is that um they do play with the fact that, you know, these are props, these are sets, you know, she's gonna she's going to open up a door that doesn't go anywhere. Because, I mean, obviously it's not going to be a full house because you're just going to build what you need to shoot. The scene scary of the first time you saw it? No, it's, it's suspenseful. Action-packed. All, those cra all that craft services on the floor. That's a lot of money right there. Yeah, it is. I think you probably would have picked that up after they were wrapping for the night. I don't think that they're wrapped for the night. I think they're taking a break. Are they? Yeah. How long is this break? The morning? Well, wait, no. The I don't know why that stuff's still out, because no, they did shut down production after the murder, so. Mm. Maybe that's for, like, the studio execs, maybe working on some other movies. I don't know. I guess if they're not using the set, that's a fine place to put it. <laughs> How far into the film in Scream 3 were you until you figured it out, or as far as the killer goes, or did you did it take you all the way to the end? Um, it was ruined for me online through, really? an, through an online chat. You got to be out of those chat rooms, Kevin. You're, you're too young to be in those. Well, we were talking about horror movies. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. And what was his name? The, well, this guy's like... I. <laughs> I I always I I actually caught the uh, a a preview of this movie and I did not believe him at all. He was saying all of this stuff and I'm just like this stuff sounds. He's like, oh, she's having visions of her mom and like there's like there's like her mom's on the set and she's in a body bag and I'm like, what are you? talking about and i thought that he was just he was just lying about all of this so i'm just like well well who's the killer and he's like he's like oh scott foley is the director of stab three and he's he's the killer and he's her brother i'm like what I'm like this is the stupidest thing i ever heard so i didn't believe him for a second and then i went to see it four days later and as i'm watching this movie the stuff that he was saying that, you know, out of context seems very preposterous. Some of it even in context is still a little preposterous. Um, I didn't believe any of it. But then, yeah, I was trying to put it together. I'm like, oh, I hope that he's wrong. But no, he was right. That was the killer. Hmm. And I do kind of like it, the fact that this is the only one in the series where there's only one killer. It kind of... Um, you know, I, I kept expecting, well, who's going to be the other killer? Who's going to be the other killer? And you know, if it is a sibling and it, it it's just weird in the fact that um with all of the sequels, um, at least one of the killers was somehow involved with a character from the first movie. Hmm. And in Scream Three and Scream Four, they're both relatives of Sydney. So I mean, she's got a messed up family. Poor Sydney. Such a sweet girl. Cool the shades on. 
You never did some online chatting about horror movies <laughs> with some guys? No, I haven't. I haven't done that. You're like, tell me more. Yeah, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do next? So Cor Courtney and Parker have kind of become friends by this time. Did you feel preyed upon? No, I mean, I was like, I don't know, I guess I was like 17, but we didn't talk about anything sexual. Huh? It's just horror movies. Who's talking about that? Were you preyed upon <laughs> online? No. That would be a cool office. That's the office to have right there. That isn't a very nice office. I don't know whose office this is. Glasses? <laughs> I hope it's Bob Shea's office. I I you know, I couldn't be wrong. I could be wrong. There there is a more than fifty percent chance that I'm guessing that the background of that possibly might be CGI'd. Mm-hmm. Um, especially like a second floor, like who is a swimming pool right out there with a diving board? It could be. I, I honestly don't know. It's been a while since I listened to the commentary. I'm sure they probably talked about it on there. <laughs> Easy her all though. <laughs> <laughs> Does she, she remind you of Craig from Parks and Rec at all? A little bit. I could see that. She does. She has that kind of manic energy. Do you remember kind of those like those pants that Parker's wearing? I don't even know how to describe them. They were um they were kind of like those cargo khakis, um but they were like that really 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 thin material. Do you remember those? I think they I would have like take another look here. They would have like fifteen pockets. Did they have like the zipper at the knee? Yeah, some of them did have the zipper of the knee where you could have turned them in the shorts. I, I had a had pair those. of those that were orange. Oh my god. Orange? <laughs> did you have like an orange jacket or sweater to go with it? An um, orange Columbia jacket, maybe? I had an orange vest that I wore with that. <laughs> that was like fleece. Oh. <laughs> you could have. <laughs> Which I sometimes wore that orange fleece vest with my Jinkos. Remember, or how did orange become so popular for a couple of years? I don't know. And then it just vanished. It's not a very flattering color. Look, look, yeah, there's a lot of orange here. Yeah, it was that late nineties that yeah, it became it really huge. popular. I remember that. But yeah, like I had the I had those and I had the the vest and then did you also did you have any of the like the long gold chains necklaces? <laughs> never had a gold chain. Never. Or a vest, or zipper cargo pants. Jeff bibs. Uh, when I was little, yeah. Like, like as a little, teenager. No. Did you like? Did you hang them from like the one side? Like if let I, it fall if over. I would have them. I would. Yes, that was the thing to do back in the day. That's what I did with my Tommy bibs. <laughs> Wearing with my gold chain necklaces. No, I think that the, like I wore more like the puka necklaces. <laughs> There's no puka in this movie. No, you miss puka. I like a good puka necklace. <laughs> Do you like puka necklaces? No, I actually don't like them. They're very dated. Do you know the guys who wear puka necklaces? Or like the guys that would have like the flat hair and then they would have like it would be like a fence of hair up in the front yeah. and that would be like dyed tipped blonde and like the rest would be brown those were the guys who wore the poop and that Yep, that's true that's that's such a a weird haircut and people, some people still have that did you have that fence haircut nope never do you ever the, ever have the goatee nope like the Randy? Yeah. Soul patch? Soul patch. Never had the goatee. I just had the 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 hair right here for my chin.
So we get some backstory with Sydney here. Um, I mean, it works for what it is. I kind of like that she's kind of still holding on to these memories of her mom. I think it's kind of sweet. Um, I just, I don't know. This feels so, I mean, you have all these like manic comic moments with Parker and Courtney and it's just kind of bam, 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 bam. And then they try to slow it down with almost this dead halt to kind of give, give Sydney and her mom some closure and some backstory. And I, I don't mind it, but I don't know for sure that it works for this movie in the context of everything that's happened before it. It just feels very out of place to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when you have such kind of a, like you said, manic or, you know, fast paced and everything just seems to be kind of moving at a steady pace and it's a good pace for what the film is and we just get a little bit of a lull. Not that it's it's something that's terrible and, you know, maybe in the grand scheme of things it may be needed but you think they got some good sexual chemistry <laughs> no So I love this when City calls and then <laughs> Parker is yeah. trying to listen in. You know, like you just know with this. Like I just wonder how much of this is actually on the script page. Like mm -hmm. you know what this was. It. Like yeah. her, like <laughs> yeah, look at her face. She's like batting yeah, her yeah, head. Like yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what's happening. <laughs> Yep. I said when she dies, I would have rather have had her be the killer. I wish, um, at least she's given a lot to do here. So this house you guys might know was also the house that um, they used for Halloween H two O. So we got the kind of the cast of Stab 3 intermixing with the original Woodsboro survivors. Uh, I guess another thing that I don't know kind of why this works is that I know that they're kind of having the birthday party for Robin, but it doesn't... I don't know if they would really celebrate i mean i don't know how long they are in this stab three or how well they've gotten to know each other but they certainly didn't feel like friends and if i knew that they were killing members of stab three i don't know how much i would want to be hanging out with this crowd maybe instead of having a scream five how cool do you think it would be to have a, a stab and start maybe the whole stab thing? That could be fun. I mean, I know that MTV is doing the Scream series, so I mean, I'm curious what they're going to do with that. But um, I'm just afraid, you know, Scream 3 and Scream 4, uh, I don't think that either of them are bad movies. I think they're very entertaining. I think that they serve a purpose. I think that they're good. They don't reach the excellence of the first two Scream movies. And... I don't want this to be one of those series that kind of just kind of gets driven into the ground. And then we we have another horror TV series coming up, don't we? Friday the 13th is in talks. Yes. That's that's um, actually, it's intriguing yet kind of scary at the same time. It's going to be Crystal Lake and Jason and something about him jumping times. Oh, I don't know. I know. I was like, okay, I'm on board. And then you mentioned about like the him ta it taking place in different time periods. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe. I you know with the next one, they're doing found footage. So I don't know what's happening with that series. I don't. 
I don't particularly know if I agree with what's going on, but the way that I look at it is, you know, and this is a bad way to look at it, and this is why these movies keep making money, but this is just how horror fans are, is that we'd rather have a bad movie of Jason than no movie of Jason at all. Mm -hmm. Um, Do we know anything about the station, the channel it's on? Is it? Mm -hmm. I think they're just shooting a pilot, just and doing they're the going to shop at the networks for the fall. Hmm. But it's very early. Like, they just kind of just announced kind of the press release. So, I mean, they haven't even gotten the cast together or anything. So, it's. So, here we get the voice changer box. I. That's kind of cool. Some I good, wish I had one of those. That's some good technology. Who would you call and who would you sound like? I, I would use your voice and I'd call into your work. <laughs> and I would say the worst stuff ever <laughs> and you'd get fired and it'd be so funny. Maybe I'd call your mom. You don't have my mom's number. I could get your mom's number. What are you going to say to her? <laughs> the worst stuff ever? I think I could get you into more trouble than you could get me. <laughs> There'd be so many people I'd call under your voice. Do you wish these kind of side characters were in a little bit more? No, 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 no. Parker's in it, and that's the only one I really care about. I think that these, they're very flatly written, where we don't really get to know any of the characters, and it doesn't even really matter. What about you? Well, that's where I was kind of going at. Like, would we, would we have wanted to get to know them? No, I mean, all we know is like, okay, well, this person's supposed to be this person, and this person's supposed to be this person. And they kind of play that off with Parker. And I really think that that's really all that we need. So here we are at the movie props. Yeah, there's some really cool props in here. Well, see, this is the scene that I was actually, I remember watching this in the theater. And then, like, they show him dad. I'm like, ha, that guy was wrong. He was lying. Hmm. Like, he's not the killer. So I think this is kind of weird right here, the fact that Parker's just kind of there. Like, how long was she just hi hiding behind there? Yeah. It's funny, though. It works. Like, her character's so quirky and weird that I could see her hiding until help came. Look at her run. I think that you'd probably be Angelina. Hmm. Especially right here. If you ever made it in Hollywood, this would be you. Hmm. <laughs> She's got a point. What, that you would have <laughs> sex with some Hollywood bigwigs? <laughs> and you wouldn't want to die because of that? You don't want it to be all for nothing. Oh. That's a pretty cool shot of them. Of Barely a, any blood, though. Taken away. Yeah. And I mean, that's what another kind of one that about. was yeah. kind of like done off screen. But yeah, I do like the shot. So I'm just trying to think here. We had Cotton die. Here we have a lot of people die in just a short amount of time. It's a lot, a lot of good action here. So Cotton, Cotton was one of our original Scream members, and and he's dead. Anybody else from the original that's still that's kicking, get, getting the getting the knife that could still die? Maybe the cheerleader and the other girl in the bathroom. <laughs> Oh, that's gotta hurt. 
Yeah, we get some violence with him. Mm-hmm. Just the thud. And splat. Parker's about to get it. <laughs> Trap doors everywhere. So there's a lot of controversy, I remember, in the theater and talking to friends afterwards that so Parker dies here and there are some people that's like did do we actually shoot her and it wasn't until after I watched her a second time that I'm like no she actually gets stabbed he actually shoots too high but it is kind of a little awkwardly edited where I I can see how people could get the confusion of the fact that she was stabbed and she was shot Because she, we have that, and then, like, do you think she was shot and stabbed? No. Why would she fall that way if she's getting shot? Because she got shot in the glass. There was confusion sense. in the theater. You were confused? I was not confused. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would have been confused if you were in the theater. So you didn't see this one until many years later? Uh, no, it was, uh, I don't know the exact length of time from theater play to when I saw it, but no, it was, uh, it was a little bit. Yeah, the first time I saw this, the, the first day um, I, the first time I saw it, I was on a date and the second time, um, I went with friends, third time I went with other friends and fourth time I went with my mom. So your mom's not a big fan of these? No, I don't think she's ever seen any of them. You think she'd like them? Might enjoy him a little bit, but I don't know if she's not. I don't think she'd be a big fan of the profanity. <laughs> Were you confused a lot in this one more than any other one? As to like who the killer is, just or like, yeah, just everything in general, like what's gonna ha <laughs> what's gonna happen next, what's going on. I remember here. that being a shot in the trailer where you thought that he was gonna get the knife to the head. Um, it's honestly hard to remember. Like I can vividly remember seeing this in the theater, but I don't really remember any of my thoughts. I I'll be able to talk about that much more with Scream Four of. I still remember, and we can talk about this with other commentary when we do that movie, but like for Scream 4, when they show Ghostface the first time, I got chills in the theater because like, I'm like, oh my God, like I'm actually reliving my teenage years by watching a Scream movie in the theater, which that was a surreal moment. But as to what was going on in my head when I was watching these original three for the first time, I, I have no idea. I probably remember the, I have the clearest memories of watching Scream 2 of the original three in the theater just because it was just such a, a chaotic audience and it was just jam packed and there wasn't quite that kind of, it, it's weird because Scream 3 actually made opening weekend, it made more money than Scream 2 did. It did about 35 million, which is roughly what Scream 4 did in total just kind of a bummer right there, but what are you gonna do? Uh, um, who's calling? I would do that to you. Like that, that'd probably be my favorite thing is to just repeat what you say in your voice. That'd be funny for you? That'd be funny for you, wouldn't it?
So I heard that the guy, um, I believe his name is Roger Jackson, who does the voice of Ghostface. That I mean, it's obviously not just a box. It's this guy who can actually do his voice. Like, I heard that you can meet him at conventions, and he does, like, he'll do, like, a voicemail message for you, like, as Ghostface. That'd be pretty cool. I think that'd be awesome. I'd like to do that. I'm kind of sad that, well, actually, um, Days of the Dead in November, we're finally getting a Scream cast member doing a horror con, and Rose McGowan's going to be there. We had Jamie Kennedy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess yeah Jamie Kennedy was at Horror Hound Weekend and I just didn't care I guess of the girls I, I guarantee you no matter who you are as a Scream fan you care more about the, the female cast members than you do about the male cast members with the exception of one character and that's Skeet Ulrich Skeet Ulrich really since the original film has not talked about them hasn't done any interviews I don't think he's ashamed I just think that He's just kind of doing his own thing, and it was a movie role, and he just doesn't care anymore. So if there was one character you could meet at a convention, who would it be? That's, that's, a, that's a tough question, too. I would Personally, I would love to meet... I think I'd pick Courtney Cox. Courtney? Between this and Friends. What would you pick now? I'm kind of leaning Skeet? towards... Towards... Um, Lori Metcalf. <laughs> that would be awesome, too. <laughs> she but... just seems like a fun person, hopefully, in real life. What about Emma Roberts? Know. Emma Roberts would be good. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of young, hot talent that could be uh, at a convention. Rory Culkin. <laughs> Rory Culkin. I could... You love Rory Culkin. Oh, yeah. I mean, then that's kind of a cool. It's it's a lot to say about a franchise too. When there's you know multiple people who would be your first pick. I mean, you could have like a couple people from each film. Be like, oh, I want to see them. 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 So watching these again, um, do you have like uh, I mean, because you're now watching Scream Three again for the first time in a while. You recently, at least in the last you know year or two, watched um. Scream 4, um, what, has your ranking changed? How would you kind of put these in order from kind of best to worst? Well, I like the, I like 1 and 2. They're my top 2. And then, hmm. I don't know, something about, I don't know, there, there is something about Scream 3 which is still kind of, it was harkens back to the the original. The original is obviously because it was kind of it's a it's a few years ago. Still has has um, I don't even know how to put it, but maybe kind of that that look, mm -hmm. that um, film look of the uh, of the original couple. Um, so Scream Four, I don't know. It's a it's a different breed in Scream Four as well. So it's it's kind of tough to say. But if I was gonna sit down and watch one, I don't know. Maybe I'd pick Scream. Scream 4, just because it's... I We can talk about when we watch Scream 4. Scream 4 has, by far, my least favorite cinematography, which we'll talk about that more when we watch Scream 4. It, it mm -hmm. had to have been a style choice. I, I hate it. Um, but Scream 4, um, I don't know if you guys know this, or you guys, I mean, it might just be something you just don't notice, but... Scream 4, for whatever reason, it does that um, kind of faded out blurry background whenever there's a character on the foreground. It does that for the whole movie of Scream 4, and it drives me crazy. I think it makes, I think the original three Scream films feel so much, you know, very, very shot on film. And it was obvious that Scream 4, I would guess that it probably was Digivil. Uh, it could have been film, I don't know, but um, it does have that digital look, and it, it makes it makes it look cheap, and it makes it look soap opera-ish. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I I would just like to go back to a little bit more blood, and I just remember the the bedroom with that just soaked in blood, which is it's great for. Yeah, that was always kind of a cool. I like that, cool I think, but you have like. 
Ugh, there's so much. I mean, we can, we'll can. we definitely talk about that more later, but if we talk about characters not being used in Scream 3, oh, God, Scream 4 is even worse. You have, you have people like Adam Brody, who's got, like, six lines, and then he gets a dumb death, and then you get stupid Anthony Anderson, who gets stabbed in the face, and this is fuck Bruce Willis. There's all of that stuff where it's like the the problem that I have with Scream Four. I feel like we're God. We're talking about Scream Four a lot here, but um, is it is trying really, really, really hard to still kind of be hip and current and relevant. And there's a lot of scenes where I feel like it is trying too hard. I think the ending's brilliant. I think the original, the beginning's fun. There's a lot in the middle there that I like bits and pieces of, but I don't think, I also don't think the editing is as strong as the original three. Mm. Also, another thing that I, I mean, talking about don't like about Scream 4 is that um, I don't feel like I feel like Scream Four is always gonna have like this big climactic climax, and Scream Four it kind of has like the little bit of the house and the stuff at the hospital, and it just I don't know that it doesn't quite gel together. But I actually really like Scream Four, even though I'm talking a lot of bad stuff about it. I didn't like its climax. Did you like its climax? <laughs> I don't. I don't mind a good climax. I saw it six times in the theater, so I had to have liked it. I mean, I do like it. It's just, I have some videos like that of you. Where were you taking these videos? Outside your bedroom door. <laughs> you're putting on lipstick. I like this with the bloody body bag. Mm -hmm. I think those cases are already here. So you know what? Some people don't like this ending because it kind of rewrites what happened in Scream, the original Scream, that like he told Billy and Sue to kill her, blah, blah, blah. How do you feel about that? I wish I, I'm not a big fan of it. You? It works. It works. And it works well enough. The, 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 I, yeah, I guess there's two ways to kind of look at it. I mean, I always like it when there's a sequel and it ties something into the original that you never even thought of like this was mm -hmm. this would have never even crossed your mind so on that end i like it on the other end i want to think that you know Stu and and um you know maybe this, this was just some idea that came to him one day mm -hmm. at school or something you know well, those two kind of came up with it together I, I honestly think had this been the last movie in this series this would have meant a lot more because it ties directly into what started this whole thing. But because we have a movie that comes after this, this feels very empty. Mm -hmm. She's just fucking everyone. <laughs> She had a husband, she's, and she was she's just getting around. That's okay. Doing cotton, and Billy's dad. She getting paid? No, she just <laughs> liked the sex. Okay, that's that's a good woman. Why wouldn't she go for why Why wouldn't she try to go for Billy at least? <laughs> He's too young. That's kind of creepy, though, that, like... Could you, like, imagine doing a girl and then knowing that your dad did her mom? <laughs> like, do you find that very weird? Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> well, that's what this is. 
<laughs> so you wouldn't be okay with that? <laughs> depends on how hot she was. Yeah, it always depends on that. <laughs> like, would you talk to your dad about it? <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, her mom does that same thing in bed. <laughs> I, I I gotta say I do like seeing Ghostface as Ghostface, not half Ghostface, no mask. Okay. Does that make any sense to you? Your not thoughts really. on that? Like I I just want to see Ghostface as Ghostface. I don't want to see him just in his black getup. It kind of takes away. A little bit from me. Well, you have that in Scream 4, too, with Jill. Yeah. Um, I mean, you have that in Scream 2, too, though. I think you have it. I think the first one's the only one you don't have that, because Mickey's wearing the ghost face outfit. Yes. Yeah, mm. because he takes off the mask in the theater. Hmm. This is just not as pronounced as him running around the the room. This is you trying hmm. to get in your house. Oh, strong I am, just busting through doors. That's kind of a good uh, kind of, I think that's, I mean, that could be how the filmmakers felt about Columbine. You choose, you choose to kill people and that's the decision you make and you should learn to take some responsibility for your actions. This actually, a, this out of all of the finales might be the best staged. It's just the, I mean, their showdown just between Sydney and the killer, mm -hmm. I think, is is the best in this one. I mean, it really feels like yeah, the, this a is brawl. really physical, and it goes on, mm -hmm. and on. I mean, just all the the different cuts here, all the the different edits. Yeah, I mean, you don't really have this with the other three. I mean, it's like little bits and pieces, but not like all mm -hmm. at once. Yeah, it's really well staged. So if that was your brother and he was trying to kill you, would you be able to kill him? Yeah. No, you wouldn't. So this is more of you as Dewey. <laughs> <laughs> Being the hero, saving the day. He doesn't do shit. Well, I guess he does Look kind of save the day. Was there ever a time, Kevin, when you were maybe fearing for for one and only Sydney? Um. Well, she does get uh, stabbed in the chest in this one. The, is it the... Yeah, the... No, she gets shot. God, I can't remember. But... um. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she had shower here. So, um, you know, I'm like, no, they can't kill her. That would just piss way too many people off. But I remember when Scream 2 came out, they were, Weinstein was teasing and they said, all we can tell you is that Sydney survives up until the last act. And I was, I was always so fascinated by that and just that they would come right out and say that and to make it seem like, oh, there's going to be like this big twist in the final act. And, you know, it's, it's curious. It's, it's something that I still use that quote today when I'm talking about movies that we do.
Did you think that she was ever going to die? Oh, but no. I mean, I guess, you know, you always get those those moments where you kind of maybe have a little bit of fear inside you. But overall, I think you really know where, where the movie's headed. You you just have faith that, that she's going to be safe and she's, uh, she's going to last and outwit and outplay and be back for the sequel. So how do you feel about Scott Foley as Roman? Do you think he's a good killer? Yeah. Ooh. Sell Sid. I'm just I'm just uh entranced by this Incoming phone. Call. Yes. Is that a Nokia? It had to have been. Like I think that could you get a cell phone back then that wasn't Nokia? So where is Nokia now? I don't know, I think they're still doing phones. Really? Yeah. Like for what, Virgin Mobile? No, Virgin Mobile's good phones. That's what I have. Cricket? I have a Virgin Mobile Supreme. <laughs> well, you have the Eris, don't you? No, that's your phone. Your purple phone? I never had a purple phone. <laughs> phone, phone, phone case, same thing. No, didn't you say it was like a pink case? <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's red. <laughs> and then I got a blue case he said was purple. Yes. Huh? You're just colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> I always love Dewey's entrances. It's her brother. Did you feel bad for him? No, he deserves this. Did you hold his hand? No. Let's okay. have him again. I think you would. I don't think you could kill somebody. That guy would. I don't even like him. Why don't you like him? <laughs> what do you ever do to you? Head him in the head. See, I don't think you could do that. Yeah, I could. I'd be good. I don't know if you know how to shoot a gun. What are you talking about? I'd be, like, awesome at it. You'd be, like, too scared. Because you've had a lot of experience shooting guns. I've seen a lot of movies with guns being shot. I'm sure you shot your gun today. <laughs> I didn't I didn't shoot my gun yet today. Is it loaded? It's loaded. It's loaded. Is it cocked? It's ready to go. It's been an issue with Maxim. Cocked and ready to aim. <laughs> Courtney actually looks good here. Or better. Mm-hmm. Where's Cherokee? It's sad that Cherokee's probably dead now. <laughs> and that was that's an adult is. dog, and this was 14 years ago. That dog is dead now. That's sad, but that dog would be like 20 now. Old Golden Retriever. I think Golden Retriever just only lived to like 10 or 11. He probably died like the next summer. Oh, that's sad. I think this is a really nice scene. This is the scene that I talked about before, the first time I saw it in the theater. Like, I might have teared up a little bit. It's really sweet. That's her actual ring, I believe. Oh, really? I, I believe so. I would heard that. I could see them doing that. I feel like David Arquette still has that shirt. He probably does. <laughs> I think she still has those little flowers for her hair. <laughs> I don't think so. Was the short bangs ever like a thing? Like, did I miss? I it, it had to have been. Was but... missing like a fad back in the day? Did you have short bangs? I just had regular bangs. I've never seen you with bangs. 
You don't have the hair for bangs. <laughs> it's too poofy. I yeah, I, I guess like guys had the short bangs and they had like the Caesar cut. George Clooney? Yep. Why is George Clooney engaged? Like some I don't like that. Why not? He's supposed to be Clooney. He's supposed to be like the ladies' man. Just, yeah, just playing the field. He had his good twenty years of doing that. He's still got another twenty years ahead of him. What is she like a supermodel? I assume so. so I don't think anyone's crying for George Clooney. <laughs> so she leaves the door open and she's not afraid anymore. If if the door opened, would you close that? I would close it. Why not? Why would you leave it draft, open? Let in the draft, the bugs, maybe some mosquitoes would come in. I think we have the the font again though in the credits. Mm -hmm. I I'm always a big fan of that. Font. We have that for all four movies. Love it. Um, but yeah, so Scream Three, some kind of box office trivia. It made thirty five million opening weekend. It was the number one movie in America for two weekends in a row. And interesting enough, uh, um, at least this is interesting for me. Um, Scream Three in its second weekend went up against. The Beach, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, and Scream 2 in its second weekend, it went up against Leonardo DiCaprio and Titanic. Uh, but Scream 3 was a much bigger hit than The Beach, even though Titanic was a much bigger hit than Scream 2. Uh, it did not break the $100 million mark like the first two Scream movies did. I think that that did have a little bit to do with the its release schedule. I think in December... You get more of kind of those those weekly days because everyone's kind of off for um, winter break. You don't really have that so much in February, but it still went on to gross ninety million dollars, and it stayed in theaters for a few months. It was released on uh, VHS and DVD that summer, and then that following fall, um, the box set of the first three was released. I still remember that. I believe it was September 26, 2000. And there was actually a really cool um, bonus DVD where there was like all these like fake um, Sunrise Studios uh, trailers on there. And I think there was trailers for like Stab and Stab 2 and Stab 3 and all these other really, really, really crappy movies. But it was kind of a cool box set. So we're ending here on Creed singing the Scream 3 anthem, Is This the End? So this is the end, at least for us. And we will be back next week with more for Scream 4. Hopefully I'll still have some more stuff to talk about as I talked about a lot of stuff that I didn't like on today's show. So I'll try to be a little bit more positive on Scream 4 on next week's edition. Yes, that, that'll, be, that'll be our goal. So I'm, I'm excited. Um, we've had a great time doing Scream, um, Scream Two, Scream Three, and then looking forward to Scream Four, kind of finishing out the uh, the franchise next week. So, um, always a fun fun few movies to watch any time of the year. Um, so until we meet again next time, thank you guys for checking out Slasher Studios commentary. Um, let us know what you what movies you guys want us to do a commentary on. So you can always find us on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, SlasherStudios.com, pretty much anywhere and anywhere on the internet. So. Until next time, have a horror